This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
thank God for our music ministry. We thank God for each of you. John chapter 3. Sing our hymn together and say a word out of God.
love the neighbor anymore? Yes. All fresh upon us. Yes, Lord. All fresh upon me, the preacher. All fresh upon the preached word. All fresh upon every heart that's listening to us this day. Spirit of the living God, all fresh in a mighty and a powerful way. That sinners will be saved, saints will be edified. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us in such a way that broken hearts will be healed, bowed down heads will be lifted up. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. For we know these and many other blessings can occur through the preaching and hearing of your word. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 The Gospel of John, chapter 3. We will read one verse from that chapter. That is verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The benevolent mission of Jesus Christ never the mission of Jesus Christ. Never the mission of Jesus Christ. We understand that the word benevolent suggests to us with or for a purpose of doing we understand that a mission is to be on an assignment given by someone else. So then Jesus is coming into the world was an assignment for the purpose of doing good. He was on a benevolent mission. In the first part of this 16th chapter, in the discourse with Nicodemus, Jesus talked about the doctrine of regeneration, the change of part of life by which a man becomes a new creature. And that's what he talked about in the first 13 verses. He was explaining to Nicodemus how to be saved. He said, you must be born again. In verse 14 of this chapter, he spoke on the grand truth of the gospel, where he was referring to the brazen serpent in the wilderness when the people were saved from the calamities by looking up to it. When we get to verse 16, he talks about the great condensed epitome of the gospel. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And then when we get to verse 17, he talks about the benevolent mission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what we'll talk about today. First thing we know, from whom did Jesus get the mission? The text says, God sent. Jesus did not just decide to come into the world in human flesh. He was sent by his heavenly Father, which means that, that he came with authority and, and he came with the backing and the support of the one that 
sent him. He was sent by his father. He was backed by his father. He was supported by his father. Uh, I worked for a banker one time that owned, who was the CEO of, of two banks, and and one of his banks was was located in a city that that didn't have any folks in it that looked like me, and consequently that didn't have any employees that looked like me, and they didn't have any customers that looked like me, but. The CEO where I worked was the CEO over there, and he sent me there to deliver a package to the president after hours. When I, when I got there, the door was locked. I knocked. Nobody answered. The teller in the drive through said, the bank is closed. I said, yes, but I'm on a mission. I have a package to deliver to the president. She said, but the bank is closed. So I knocked on the door again. And that time the lady came to the window and she said, the bank is closed, you can't come in. I said, but I have a package to deliver. And after we went back and forth, I, I finally gave them the name of the one that sent me. And the one that sent me was the CEO of the bank. He was the one that paid them. He was the one that hired them. And when I gave them the name of the CEO that sent me, I heard the key go in the door. And the door opened and I was able to complete my mission. They couldn't stop me from completing my mission because of the one that sent me. And so the enemies of God could not stop Jesus from fulfilling his mission because of the one that sent him. He was sent by the Heavenly Father. He was sent by God Almighty. He was sent by the creator of the heavens and earth. He was sent by the one that spoke the world into being. He was sent by the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one, the almighty God. He was backed by his heavenly Father. They could not stop him from completing his mission because of the one that sent him to where he was sent. The text said he was sent into the world. The world means the physical world, but it also means the spiritual world. Uh -huh. Jesus was sent into the physical world for the express purpose of dealing with the spiritual world. The physical world was not lost. The mountains were all right. The roads were all right. The hills and the valleys were all right. But a man was sent. So Jesus was sent into the physical world to deal with the spiritual world which was sinful mankind. All we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That was the express purpose of God sending his son to deal with the spiritual world which was sinful mankind. But if you notice, if you notice that verse, third of that verse, that verse tells us that for which he was not sent. It says he sent not his son to condemn the world. God had many reasons to condemn sinful mankind. The world was willfully ignorant, willfully ignorant of God's plan for man's life. The world has sought darkness and love. And mankind was, was living in darkness and loved the darkness. God had reason to condemn the world. The world had rejected the prophets and it was rebellious toward God's prophets. God had reasons to condemn the world. The world was grossly covetous. The world was rebellious. The world was idolatrous. God had reasons to condemn the world. And when we add ourselves to the list, 
when we add our sinfulness to the list, we can agree, we can say, yes, it is a fact that God had reasons to condemn sinful mankind. Thank God Almighty. He didn't send his son on a mission to condemn sinful mankind. Although he had, he had many reasons to do it, he didn't send his son. For that reason, we all say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for what did he send his son? The first thing. That, that through him, the word, sinful mankind, yeah. might be saved. Uh -huh. Jesus was on a, a saving yeah. mission. God, God, God wanted the word yeah. to be saved from spiritual ignorance uh -huh. and error. Yeah. Therefore, he sent the perfect teacher. His son, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And an imperfect teacher could not teach imperfect people. God had to send the perfect teacher. And the perfect teacher was his son, Jesus Christ. God wanted the world to be saved from the bondage, penalty, and power of sin. So he sent the only one that had power over evil and sin. His only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Those of us that were under the penalty of sin and under the power of sin could not save ourselves. God sent the only one who had that power. That was his son, Jesus Christ. God wanted the world to be saved from the presence of sin. Therefore, he sent the only one that could give us a new life, that could give us glorified bodies. He sent the only one that could take us home when we die. The only one that could give us a crown of glory. His son. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So God wanted to save us. Yes. From the pleasure of sin. From the penalty of sin. From the power of sin. And someday from the presence of sin. But that His son, Jesus Christ. Thank God for, yes, sending his son, Jesus Christ. Well, in order for God to save us, in order, in order for God to do what God wanted to do, somebody had to die. But a sinner couldn't die for a sinner. Evil couldn't die for evil. But yet somebody had to die. Somebody had to die 
Jesus, all have been done to son. Jesus. Let whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Sinful mankind can now be saved because God sent his son on a benevolent mission with his back and his power and his power.
I know all of us have something to say to God. Let us pray. God our Father, we gather at this great hour of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Father, before we ask you for anything, we want to say thank you. uncomfortable week. But Master, you brought us safely through. We're still suffering some things, but we thank you that we're still here. We know it's your love and kindness and your tender mercy. Lord, we bring before you those whose lives were more difficult than ours. Some of them, Lord, might well still be suffering. But Master, we know you, God, everywhere at the same time. like our state was hit the hardest. So Lord, we pray that you will help the rest of this state to get through it and help us to help others. As we go by the way, help us to meet the needs of others that we come in contact with that are yet doing without. And Lord, we bring before you those families that lost loved ones. Many of them were trying to save their lives and save their children and save their families. But they unknowingly used the wrong methods that caused families to die, houses to burn. So Lord, we ask you comfort those family members that are yet living. Strengthen them for the days ahead. Find up their broken hearts. We thank you, Lord, for the decisions that have been made this day. The decisions to put lives under your control. The decisions to surrender all. The decisions to rededicate. The decisions to become a member of one of your churches. Help them, Father, to realize that to make a decision is not enough. Give them the courage and strength to act on their decision. These blessings and others, Father, we ask. In the name of your one of a kind Son, Jesus Christ. coming now with our announcements that are here for our attention.
those services have been said. I'm going to tell you about their funeral services now. Funeral service for Brother John Henry Goolsby will be Saturday at 10 a.m. And funeral services for Brother, Sister Brenda Charles will be Saturday at 2 p.m. Both of those services will be at Mount Calvary. Mount Calvary also received a thank you call. The card reads, it's just so like you to reach out to others to do things, even small things, that help in a big way. To care like no one can and take the time to show it. You have a deep down goodness that comes through in your actions. Saying thank you just doesn't seem to cover it. You are a blessing to me and I'm truly grateful for you. Love always, Aaron D. Walker. Sometimes we receive these cards and we're thinking that this, this really touched this person to go out and buy a card and make sure that members of my cabinet know that they appreciate what we're doing for them. And for that, we we'll say thank you. Those are your announcements for today. Let us, Governor, I will say also according to the announcements as they were given to us. <clears throat> 